How many of you have had life challenging moments or events that change your life forever? An event that challenged you to your core. Do you remember how you feel? Did you, did you ever get the answer? Well, I'm here to share how my life was changed by a surprising event. An event that turned my life into the world of service. On January 3rd, 1976, the first Saturday in a new year, in a town, a little small southern town called Pelham, Georgia, where everything worked in routine, like clockwork. A town that was peaceful and predictable. A town of loving people. My town. My household, everything we did was routine. On Saturday mornings, my mom would give my daddy a list, a grocery list of items to go pick up at the local grocery store. Like routine, like clockwork. Every Saturday, my dad would go down to Scott and Marshall, the local grocery store, family-owned grocery store, where everybody knew you in the store. To make sure dad didn't miss anything on that list, they would double check it. <laughs> and every time dad would come home, park the same way in the driveway, I would run outside to help him carry the groceries inside the house. It was an exciting time for me and my siblings, not because we had the groceries, but because we had the box of Cracker Jacks. And it wasn't the cornmeal popcorn or the peanuts. It was a small prize on the inside. Yeah. Then one day, this day, Pella was not peaceful or predictable. As Dad drove up and I ran to the car in hopes to get these Cracker Jacks, he says to me, grab your mother, your sisters and brothers, and take them to the back room. I have a surprise. Boy, was I excited. Maybe we had two boxes of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> At least that's what I thought. So what I do is dad asks. I go inside the house. I gather mom, my three sisters, and my brother. I put them in the back room, and I run back outside as fast as I could to face dad at the driver's side doors. Something had changed. There was a different look on his face. He wasn't the same. In a split second, with five pounds of pressure, he pulls the trigger of a 22 Luger. On the right side of his temple, all I can remember seeing was the splatter of blood all over the inside of the console of the car. His body became lifeless. I didn't know what to do. I'm 11 years old. I have no answers. It started. It's like my life started all over. I, 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 didn't know, I didn't know what to do. That was my first strike. First strike in life, dad's gone. I mean, he's gone before I even get facial hair. He's not gonna be there when I walk across the stage to graduate. He won't be out in the audience. Dad's gone. Every time I sweat, it's tears. Even today, you're the first group to hear the story. I've carried it in my heart my entire life because it's time for me to tell the world that the story doesn't stop there. It was only one strike. But then, to no fault of my mom, we get evicted. So where's she gonna go? She has five kids. House to house, place to place. Everybody could stay but me. They would take her to take my three sisters and take my little brother, but they didn't, they didn't want me. I started feeling like something was wrong with me. Became depressed, reserved, cried all night, had the nightmares of that incident of that trigger pulling and that blood splatter. Night after night after night, didn't want to go to sleep. 
Strike two. I can't stay with mom and my sisters. That's, that's my support brand. That's who I want to be with. But I moved with my great-grandmother. She couldn't read or write, but she had the wisdom of ten geniuses. That's where I learned how to love. She taught me how to work hard. She told me how to dream and dream big. Matter of fact, she told me if I accomplished my dream by myself, it wasn't big enough. The wisdom. Every day, my friends would pass the house to go down to the field to play baseball. But I was still depressed. I didn't want to be around them. I didn't want them to tease me. You know how kids get, they, sometimes they're cruel. So to protect myself, I, I never went outside. But then one day I mustered up the strength to go down to that field. I get there and there's all the kids in the community, all with bats, balls, and gloves, everybody but me. But the coach says to me, son, grab that catcher's mitt. The team supply that glove. Don't worry about a glove. You just carry that glove and you get behind that play and you let one ball get behind you. Can you do that for me? Yes, sir. And every day I would go home from school. I would sit in the backyard and I was practice and I would practice and I was practice and I was practice. I mean, I was practice working at making sure that one ball get behind me, making sure I catch everything. And it worked. It worked. I was able to grow in the sport of baseball. Good enough to get a scholarship to go to college. When I got to college, I was determined that I was going to be the best they ever seen. My four years went by so fast, I don't even remember the first day I saw I matriculated. <laughs> but it was an exciting time for me. I had earned my degree. And baseball was the pathway. Even the times I tried to fail on purpose because I didn't want to feel like a failure. I guess what my dad did. Because people always would reference, you're just like your dad. You're smart. I didn't want to be smart. I tried to fail on purpose. Because every time I did that, I could see the image. It would replay over and over and over. But I had now accomplished four years of study and baseball was the pathway. I signed with the Chicago White Sox, didn't make it to the major leagues, but what baseball taught me was the game of life, that it has three strikes. I only had two. So when life was still going on for me, there were people who saw more in me than I saw in myself who refused to let me quit, to let me give up, who fed me when I was hungry, who gave me motivation and empowered me to believe that I can do anything I put my mind to, one after the other. Great people, people who inspired me to keep going further. I was released by the Chicago White Sox. I moved back to South Florida. And with $512, I started my first business, a home medical equipment company out of my garage with three pieces of inventory. Sell those three, flip them, sell those six, flip them, sell those 10, flip them. I kept going over and over and over. And I got so good at it, I had a whole lot of inventory. <laughs> For 12 years, I built that business. Grinding every day. Understanding those people that had crossed my path was no accident. The word that my great grandmother gave me was no accident. It was only two strikes. And the game was still being played. And I was going to maintain the same vision I had at 11 years old for the rest of my life. That was my personal challenge. So it was those people who saw in me what I didn't see in myself. It was people who every day I carry this ball. It has their names on it. People like Mr. Jesse Haynes. Mr. Eddie Jackson, Mr. Larry Frosted, who gave me my first job at the age of 12. His uncle, Max Frosted, who was the big boss, who I learned my business acumen by watching him do transactions. 
Dr. Willis C. Robinson, my college president, when I was 17 years old on the campus of Florida Moyer, he told me, son, you got something. You have the it. Don't waste it. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Robert Branch, the greatest grant writer I've ever seen, put pen to paper. Ernest Harvey, who throwed me that catcher's mitt. Alfred Parker, who recruited me and made sure I got that scholarship. People, common people, is who signed my ball. So tonight, I want to challenge you to find people who've been inspiration in your life and let them sign your ball. If you had tough times, you've had challenges, it's only one strike, the game is not over. If you had trauma or even an image of death, don't let it define who you are. Continue to see your vision. You only have two strikes. And the third strike would be if you didn't take your ball and get those people who impacted your life to say thank you and I carry you with me every day. That's how we change the society to increase love to empower people to seek their dreams and aspirations. But more importantly, I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you, and I challenge you to take your ball so people will ask you to sign their ball. You be the signer of the ball. You be the one to empower. And when the game is over, we will all have victory. Thank you.